For the first time in human history, the burden of disease requiring surgical care has overtaken that of infectious disease. Injuries, burns, obstructed labor, appendicitis, cataracts, hernia, club foot, cleft lip and palate. These are the public health challenges of the next 30 years. Als hij direct na zijn geboorte aan zijn voeten was behandeld, zou hij nu niet zo zwaar gehandicapt geweest zijn. Veel deelnemers aan dit symposium dit weekend in Amsterdam kennen legio van die voorbeelden. Zij is verloskundige in Somaliland en weet wat het gevolg is van het gebrek aan chirurgen. A woman having a baby uh, whose baby is not coming out the proper way uh, and who would need a cesarean section anywhere else in the world may die in countries like mine. Veel mensen in de zaal behoren tot de groep van chirurgen en andere specialisten. Die begint deze maand in een brief aan de Wereldgezondheidsorganisatie. Erop aandrong iets te doen aan de tekort aan chirurgen. Een land als Burundi met 10 miljoen inwoners heeft maar 15 chirurgen. Rwanda. Voor 11 miljoen mensen zijn er 50 gespecialiseerde artsen. Supergespecialiseerde chirurgen zijn niet nodig. Er is al veel gewonnen als verpleegkundigen, zoals hier worden opgeleid, zodat ze enkele levensreddende ingrepen, zoals een keizersnede, kunnen verrichten. We hebben altijd gedacht, ook wij eigenlijk, dat chirurgie iets ingewikkelds is. En dat is voor sommige operaties wel zo, maar eigenlijk voor heel veel operaties gaat het niet om iets ingewikkelds. Het gaat om een heel eenvoudig systeem wat neer moet, gezet moet worden voor misschien maar 15 basale operaties die echt nodig zijn, nou, er, is iets, er is iets aan te doen wat we niet gezien hebben. Invloedrijke chirurgen zijn bezig een lijst op te stellen... met die essentiële ingrepen die de komende 15 jaar beschikbaar moeten komen... voor de hele wereldbevolking. En op behalf van alle de members van de organisation committee en de Nederlandse Society for International Surgery... en ook de German Society for Tropical Surgery... We, uh, uh, we, we will say... Uh, welcome to all of you. It's well known that access to surgery for many is difficult or impossible, or the service is abandoned or poor or inexistent or overflowing. A normal view is hopelessly overcrowded hospitals, long queues for treatment. We're here to talk about health care. We're here to talk about surgery. We're here to talk about human rights. We're here to talk about survival. What's the insurance in the future? As I said, train. And train. And keep on training. We have the foreign doctors who are coming, you know, visiting us for a short while, coming to volunteer for some time. Well, I think they have a role to inspire the, you know, local practitioners. People come and they want things to happen in the same day in the same week, you know. We have, diff we have to appreciate the cultural differences. Slow but sure, okay? Here is quick but sure, what is my role? This is my question and this is your question. Then you think of all the patients that you treated, adults, but also uh, mostly, I would say that, because more than 50% of the, of the patient we treat in Afghanistan are children, for sure, I would say that it's, it's highly rewarding. I think as surgeons, we should be careful that we do not take our own discipline or even a specific part of it out of a general healthcare program. And on a larger base, I think we need research towards essential surgery. We need evidence to convince policy makers that essential surgery is essential. It is the, the burden of surgical disease um, bringing us together here and, and seeking for solutions. They recommended um, to concentrate on district hospitals, to concentrate on trauma care, to expand surgical skills and to improve access to surgery. With those arrows I want to show you almost all hospitals have international partners 
But I, after having been in Malawi for three years, I hardly knew five of them. So there is urgent need to come together and to coordinate our projects. We have not addressed the role of the private sectors on this. There is a major market, as any other business, anybody coming to invest in health, I think is profit making. So by doing this also, we are challenging the, the, the health system so that you know the sense of competition is created and the government institutions also will wake up one day so I think always we need to consider to include the private sector in health delivery service thank you what's the mission of COSEXA the mission of COSEXA is to promote access to and excellence in surgical care training and research in the East Central and Southern African region. We've got 70 accredited hospitals. So if somebody wants to partner with a hospital, this is the way we see forwards. Then contact me and we can work on this and uh, move ahead. We didn't just simply lift up a course in the UK, fly it over and dump it down and say, there you are, get on with it. That's not what you do. You design a course where it's going to take place. So that's why we were thinking to start a specific training for clinical officers and it was on the job. I didn't want to sit in one hospital to train clinical officers. I wanted to go to them. And why on the job, Dr. Lungu will tell that, but one of the reasons was not to take these clinical officers out of their hospitals and to reduce even more the number of health workers in these hospitals. As this, this is a quotation from Benjamin Franklin. He says, tell me and I forget, teach me and I'll remember. But if you involve me in what you are doing, I probably will learn, will learn it uh, I will, and, and I will learn. And therefore, I will probably be able to remember for a long time. Yeah, I think the wave is there. We are all together now and we are all of the same mind. And the question is, how can we put this wave into something that really has impact? Etna, if you have an idea. Well, I think we need to put this down. We need to come up with a declaration. We need to come up with something that comes out of those two days of very intensive discussions. And this would probably be the, the basis upon which we can build future activities and uh, where to take it for, from where we can take it forward. So if my co-chair has any ideas on how we can go about doing that? Do we have a, a can we go, come up with a draft? Can we come up with a decision? Can we come up with some, uh, a declaration? Alma Ata came with one, Health for All, many, many, many decades ago. Why not come up with Surgery for All, Amsterdam Declaration? Why not? <laughs>